The release of full self-driving version 13 is upon us, and if you take a look at some of the teasers the Tesla AI team have dropped lately, it is likely going to be the biggest FSD release ever. I actually got to experience an alpha version of it firsthand at the Wii Robot event, and even though it was on closed roads, it was quite impressive. I actually made a full video about my experience at the event, but then scrapped it, because I enjoy spending my hours editing and then throwing it all away. Before I get into why version 13 will be so incredible, I need to address the rather large elephant in the room, which is that the majority of the Tesla fleet currently running full self-driving probably won't be getting this update, at least not in the near term. In the last earnings call, Tesla laid out their future FSD development plans pretty clearly and basically said that moving forward, development efforts would be focused on making rapid progress with FSD on hardware 4 and then backporting that solution to hardware hardware 3 instead of working on hardware 3 directly. I do predict this means that hardware 3 vehicles may get left behind in FSD software releases, at least for the near future. And I know that sucks to hear because the majority of FSD owners are still on hardware 3, but the good news is that they said if unsupervised FSD is not possible with hardware 3 due to hardware limitations, they would upgrade them somehow to make them capable of driverless, which I think likely means just replacing the FSD computer computer behind the glove box to give it more processing power. I guess we're just going to have to wait and see. And with all that said, let's get into this absolutely crazy list of improvements and new abilities that we can expect with the release of version 13 that's taken straight from the Tesla AI X page. Keep in mind that some of these features may not make it into the initial release of version 13, but will likely be rolled out in later dot updates. Version 13 is the very first FSD version trained on Tesla's Cortex supercomputer at Giga Texas, which uses over 50,000 H100 GPUs. And while that may not sound exciting by itself, it means that this is the very first FSD model that'll be made exclusively from hardware 4 data. If you didn't know, all previous versions of version 12 were made with hardware 3 data and is then emulated to run on hardware 4. So version 13 marks the very first point where that is no longer the case and in fact I predict the opposite will be true in that future FSD models will be trained with native hardware 4 data and then emulated to run on hardware 3. The version 13 model itself is also three times as large as what we currently have with version 12.5 and I think this is where the extra processing power of hardware 4 helps out a lot because even currently hardware 3 cars are not running the same version of 12.5 as hardware 4 cars and instead are running a smaller version of it. The larger model also allows for a three times larger context length, which I believe refers to how long the car's context window is in a given situation, which may make it perform better in situations like construction zones with flaggers or other areas where additional context is required to make the right decisions. And of course, more data and and five times the compute power with the new Cortex system compared to how they were previously training FSD. Absolute insanity. We also have much improved reward predictions for collision avoidance, following traffic controls, navigation, etc. Which I think is pretty important and it's nice to see because there's certain times on 12.5 where I'd wish the car would react a little bit sooner, but it prioritizes being smooth so much that sometimes it reacts a little late for my taste. This next one did confuse me a bit, which is efficient representation of maps and navigation inputs. I asked what people thought this meant on X, and James Dauma replied with the following. Efficient input to a neural network is often about finding a representation for the input that simplifies its transformation into a useful latent representation for efficient manipulation. And unfortunately, the little button that translates text into English wasn't working for that post, so we may never know what this bullet point actually means. The next one doesn't need much interpretation though, and that is audio inputs for better handling of emergency vehicles. The behavior around emergency vehicles has always been a problem for full self-driving, and it's really nice to see some notes specifically talking about them, because although current versions are capable of pulling over, it doesn't really do it consistently. But apparently, starting with version 13, it will not only be using vision to detect them, but sound as well, likely using the interior cabin's microphone. I can already tell you one of the first things I'm going to do with version 13 is play a siren tone from the inside of the car. 
VR just to see what happens. V13 also includes a redesigned controller for smoother, more accurate tracking, which I believe can be interpreted a few different ways. What I think it means is smoother and less jerky car controls, especially in situations like when you're in a parking lot and the steering wheel right now can jerk back and forth pretty quickly and feel very uncomfortable. But judging by how the steering input was handled during my drive at the Wii Robot event, I think they have likely completely fixed that issue in version 13. And this might be the most exciting bullet point on the list. For the first time ever, we're not only going to see FSD shift itself into reverse when it gets into a bad situation, but also gain new parking and unparking capabilities. The majority of my disengagements now are either at the very beginning or end of my drives when I'm in a parking lot and the car just doesn't really know what to do. And I'm very excited and hopeful that we see large progress in these areas very soon. It feels like they're trying to make version 13 feature complete for unsupervised FSD, especially with this next bullet point, which is support for destination options, including pulling over, parking in a spot, driveway, or garage. This means you'll be able to tell the car exactly what you want it to do when it gets to the end of your destination, including potentially pulling into your garage, if I'm interpreting that correctly, which is just mind boggling, and I cannot wait to test this out for myself. This will also be very useful for people who use FSD for ride sharing, being able to tell the car just to pull off to the side of the road and wait instead of trying to find a parking spot at the address. Very nice. And the last bullet point I'm gonna cover is improved camera cleaning and handling of camera occlusions. And this one is another one that's a bit confusing since it's really only the cameras that are behind the windshield that the car can clean itself by using the windshield wipers and washer fluid. But from what I've seen from some newer updates, this is probably referring to better messaging around camera occlusions, specifically telling the operator about which specific camera needs to be cleaned and a display of what the camera is is seeing to make it a little easier. In summary, version 13 is gonna be a big release quite possibly the biggest release in FSD history because it will finally be feature complete for driverless operation, meaning it'll be able to do everything it needs to do to get itself out of bad situations and handle the beginning and end of the drives, which is absolutely huge. And don't get me wrong, I'm not expecting it to be a robo taxi right out of the gate, but rather show us that it is possible while the miles between interventions trend upwards. And to be completely honest with you, I would much rather Tesla not release unsupervised FSD with the version 13 number anyways, because 13 is haunted. All joking aside, there is a lot to look forward to in the very near future of full self-driving. So buckle up, because I have a feeling that progress is about to get pretty crazy. And it's not only FSD that can make progress quickly, you can too using this video's sponsor. Brilliant is an interactive learning platform where you can level up your knowledge in subjects like AI, math, physics, programming, data analysis, and more in an easy and intuitive way. The lessons break down complicated subjects like how large language models work down into bite-sized pieces that are not only easy to understand, but also let you learn at your own pace. So even though you may only be spending a few minutes a day learning, you end up with a real understanding that sticks. These interactive lessons have actually been proven to be about six times more effective than just watching videos something I can definitely attest to. By using my special link in the description, you can get everything Brilliant has to offer risk-free for 30 days and also unlock 20% off their annual premium subscription. A big thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video, and until next time, everybody. Bye.